Okay, we want to find the area enclosed by the two graphs. So first we need to graph. We need to have the picture of the object. So let's see the first let's see the from the first equation or the function. So those two you can think as the equation or better yet as a function. So y equals x squared minus three, that's a quadratic function, but it's upward parabola because the number before x squared, the leading term, is positive. So let me try the graph. So that's my x axis. Sorry. That's my y axis. So the graph, the vertex is here, is a negative three comma zero. And uh, I have two x intercepts. Because when y is zero, we have x squared minus three is zero. We see the x squared equals three, which you will have a negative square root of three and positive square root of three. Right, we have those two roots for this quadratic function. Okay, so this is the graph of y equals x squared minus three. Now let me use blue color to draw the graph of y equals one. Well, y equals one is a uh, horizontal uh, straight lines, right? So let's see, this is a y equals one. So it just has a straight line. Yeah, so this blue color is a y equals one. It's also a, a constant function, right? And we want to find area include, enclosed by those two. So that means this, in between of those two functions, we want to find the area of this. So there are two ways of doing this. So I'm going to show one way. So first, the one, so first we want to go from, we want to fix X value. Right. So that means we need to find this point and this point, the x value for those two points, right? X value for those two points. Then I can set up my integration with this lower x value with a higher x value. So how do we do that? How do we find those two values? Well, those two values we see when the two graphs meet, intersect. Well, when the two functions equal each other, right? So that means x squared minus three equals to one, which means x squared equals to four, or x value equals to positive two and negative two, we square root. So when we square root both sides, we get a positive and negative two values, right? So my lower limit of x value is negative two, my upper limit of x value is positive two, then dx. I right. hope you understand what this means. This means I'm cutting the um, x-axis from negative two to two infinite pieces. So this is an infinitesimal units. Now, so this is one dimension. So one dimension, which is the x-dimension. Now y-dimension. So when you find the y-value, right? So we see at each value of x, the y-value is different. So y depends on x-value. The lower part of y is this x squared minus three, right? The lower part. And the higher part is one, where y value equals one. So we just use one minus, so basically that's the difference between those two functions, right? Enclosed is in between, minus x squared minus three. Okay, make sure you understand this point, right? You say y equals one, that's the horizontal line. That's the max value of y enclosed in this area. And the lower value of y depends on x, which is x squared minus three. So at each point of x value, the y value is different. So we use one minus the y. So we have one minus x squared minus three, the x. All right now, you know, the rest is just integrate this, in, this one. So the integrand is one, well, one minus negative three becomes one plus three, which is a four. So four minus x squared, that's our integral. Then dx from negative two to two. Let's have the integrate four minus x squared. Well, integrate four, that's just four x. 
integrate x squared, that's x cubed by, by, by power root, right? Then we want to evaluate at negative two, at the two. Fundamental theorem of calculus, right? At the two, we just get four times two minus two raised by three divided by three, right? That's the evaluation at the two. Then subtract evaluation at the negative two. Or four times negative two minus negative two cube divided by three. You know, if you don't want to do this, another observation is this. You see, this is the R function, right? R function. If this is R function, you want to evaluate at the additive inverse, the lower limit and upper limit are additive inverse. You just have to in integrate at one value multiplied by two, especially the top one, the top limit. But anyway, so four times two, that's eight. Two cubed, that's eight, right? Then minus, so four times negative two, negative eight, minus negative eight, that's plus eight. You see, that's what I mean. When you evaluate R function at additive inverse, you just double it. You get one A from the upper limit, you got one A from the lower limit. And same thing, you have a negative two raised by three is a negative eight, negative negative eight is positive eight, and then you still have this negative sign. So that's a negative A over three. So you see, you also get a two of negative uh, A over three. Well, now, so you know you have two of this. So A minus A over three, that's two over three, right? You think as we factor out eight, you have a one minus one third, which is a two third, multiplied by a, multiplied by two. What do you have? You have 32, because two times two, two times a, 16, 16 times two, 32, 32 over three. And that's it. You know, we don't care. So this is pure mathematics. We don't care about the units. So the area enclosed between those two functions, which is a shaded region by blue, the area is a 32, over three. All right, just a pure mathematics. Mm -hmm. That's it.